Splitgate has come out of absolutely nowhere and become one of the go-to shooters on PC right now. So if you're jumping in, here are the best settings to be running on PC to get an advantage over your enemies. Hey everyone, it is Forza Dave here. Welcome back to another video. Today we are taking a look finally at Splitgate, specifically the Splitgate beta. Now I checked out this game absolutely ages ago. Didn't upload any videos on it or anything, but I remember seeing it and thinking arena shooter mixed with portal. It just seems like a cool idea, but as many people have said uh, for a long time, it wasn't very popular. It had some issues, it had some bugs. It just didn't flow all that well, but there were some updates to it fairly recently and uh, I mean, everyone knows about this game now. Everyone is playing. It's free to play on Steam. On Steam charts, it's got something like 50k plus players at any one point, which is absolutely insane for a fairly small uh, development team that are behind this game. And it's honestly a lot of fun. But today, I'm going to be showing you guys the best settings to be running in Splitgate in order to get an advantage over your opponents. Um, it, it's a game that runs pretty well on a lot of hardware, but there's definitely some settings which I would recommend putting to specific values um, that will just improve your competitive advantage overall. If you do want to show your appreciation for this video, then please do click the like button down below. It really, really means a lot to me to see you guys down there. It really shows me that you guys actually want to see potentially more Splitgate here on the channel or over on Twitch, where I will hopefully be getting streaming pretty soon. The like button to me means way more than anything else. Um, so please just click it. It takes two seconds. That'll be awesome. So we're going to be using the training area for today's video to be showing off all the settings. As you can see, I've got my game running at about 360 FPS. I've got a good rig. Um, some people might not be able to run the game as I am, but hopefully with these settings, you'll be able to get your FPS as high as possible, get that visibility really good as well. Because honestly, a lot of the settings don't have a huge effect on FPS, but have a massive effect on visibility. And in a competitive arena shooter, that is what matters. So let's jump into the settings and start off in video. Number one, display mode. Put this to full screen. This ensures that your system is only rendering in your game when you're playing the game. If you put this on windowed or borderless windowed, you'll be able to alt tab out the game a bit quicker and it will feel a bit nicer, but it means that they're basically your desktop's being rendered in any other applications, which if you've got a low end PC, you shouldn't be having any other applications running at the same time. But if you did, it's rendering those in at the same time and there's GPU processing power going into other things than the game. This will lower your FPS, but actually more importantly, it will ruin your input latency or make your input latency a bit more laggy. So ensure this is on full screen. Resolution and resolution scale I would honestly recommend for most people just set this to your native resolution in the resolution area and keep the resolution at 100. If you're having real struggles with FPS, like super struggles with FPS, I would say keep your resolution at native and turn down the resolution scale. Keep pulling it down. You can go down to 50%, so essentially half the resolution, which makes the game look very blurry. So I wouldn't recommend going that low if possible. But this will definitely give you FPS gains because you're just rendering the game at a lower resolution. It's the simplest way to do it. Uh, but for me, I just keep it 100%, 1920 by 1080. That's my resolution. If you've got a 2K monitor, put it to 2K. Um, but don't change it from that. Really no need. FOV. 103 which is the max i don't want to see anyone running around on this game without 103 fov if i for example position the two guys on the left side of my screen here you can see them i've got one who's right up against the left and one who's slightly in i'm looking at this one and this one by the way and place them on the other, on the side of the screen let's turn that fov down to i mean let's go crazy let's go down to 80 we lose them they could be there they could be opponents they could be shooting us and we would have no idea so FOV is too important. Technically, FOV will actually have a slight effect on FPS in, in a lot of games. It really doesn't in this game because it's not a super intensive game. But um, it, there's really no reason to not have it on 103. It's, it's too important. Next, frame rate limit. A lot of people would just say pull this all the way to the right and leave it be. For me, that's what I've done because I can hit 360 FPS. If you have a PC that can only run the game at 200 FPS, stable, 
then put this to 200 FPS. I would actually say put it a little bit lower than kind of what you're jittering around. So you might say, oh, I can run the game at 200 FPS, but it might go between uh, 195 and 200 FPS. In that scenario, you don't want a jittery FPS, so instead pull it down to 190 because you know you can always run it at 190. And a constant frame rate is better than a frame rate that's jumping all over the place. For me, I can stay at 360 in basically every single scenario, so there's no reason for me to turn it down from that. A higher FPS does mean better input latency in general, so I want to max my frame rate out. V-Sync, keep it off. It's not useful in any game it's yes it will reduce a bit of screen tearing if you have a g-sync monitor and you can run g-sync then go ahead do it i actually have a g-sync monitor but i don't use g-sync because i just want to push the fps as high as possible uh but v-sync on its own just adds input latency for really no good reason so i would highly recommend you do not use it now let's jump into the quality settings view distance i would put it on far uh, putting on Epic does take away a little bit of performance and there's really not that many scenarios in the game where you need this on Epic. Like having this on Epic allows you to see across some of the really open maps like from edge to edge, like really small details, which you very rarely need to see. Far ensures you can see everything you need to see on every map. I wouldn't go any higher than this. There's just absolutely no need. Post-processing. And anti-aliasing, I'm actually going to pair these together. I would highly recommend you keep these on low. The reason for this is, even though having anti-aliasing on low does add a bit of kind of jagged edges, um, it's really not too bad in the game. Um, I Usually when you have anti-aliasing off or on low, it's just really, really horrible and kind of really hard to see. Um, but if I turn these two settings up, and they kind of go in tandem, so I'm going to explain them in tandem... Uh, the whole game has this like slightly smeared look. You can't really tell when you're standing still. When you start looking around and moving, like the the player models are like slightly hazy. I feel like I'm a little bit drunk when I'm playing with these on, and it's not very nice. So, I recommend you just take them and you just put them on low. Save yourself some FPS and make everything a bit sharper. Look how sharp these these enemies are now. I can go bang bang. I missed the guy. Bang, bang. Pretty good. That's what we like. Okay, next is going to be the shadows and the textures. These are very interesting settings because in a lot of games, these make a big difference. In this game, they make, like, no difference. Uh, I turn the shadows up. There's shadows here. If we look at these shadows, the shadow of this pillar. Okay, and then we come in here and we turn the shadows to low. We look at them and there's like no difference. I really don't know what the shadows do in this game. So just put them on low because it's bound to give you some FPS. And you wouldn't want shadows high anyway because shadows in a competitive shooter, especially an arena shooter, are really bad. Textures are very similar. I mean, every texture in this game is pretty much either a flat surface um, or one of these portal walls. And the texture setting doesn't really do anything either. I could turn the textures all the way to epic and be like, oh, cool, now all the textures are really good. And nothing looks any different. So unsure of what's really going on with those settings. But just keep them on low because we don't need them on epic because there's no textures to render in. It doesn't. It, it's, it's as simple as that. Effects. I didn't really figure out what this did until I just took a step back. Let me put this on epic. And we'll look around. The main thing I see effects do, the effect setting, is it adds this like starry effect to the back of portal walls. And it's a really weird effect because you can see as I move around, it's this weird, like there's all these lines and stuff going across all the walls and it's horrible. Like, I guess it's kind of meant to look cool, but... It's very distracting. So once again, getting a bit boring now, I guess. We're going to put it on low. Because it gets rid of that background. And I can see these walls far better now. Far better. They're far more clear. There's far less visual clutter. If I'm aiming at the guy, I've not got just other things going around on the screen. I'm just focused in, ready to get the kill. Last settings in the video area, I believe, apart from... 
colorblind saying, which if you are colorblind, put it on. I am red, green colorblind, so deuteranopia, that's why I've got on. Um, portal quality and portal frame rate. These need to be on Epic, and I'll show you why right now. Let me put a portal here, and then we'll put a portal here. And you'll see that one of the main uh, things you can do in this game is put portals down, and not only go through them, but you can take shots through them. So if I want to shoot this guy, like he might be aiming at me, I go, oh, I go around the corner, and I light him up from here. It's important that, number one, my frame rate of the main world and the portal world are the same. I know that technically this world is is leading to the same area, but it's basically rendering in a whole new world at a slightly lower quality. We don't want that quality to be too low, because if I come in here and turn down the portal frame rate and turn down the portal quality, and I'm sitting back here, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go for the shot. Oh my god, what am I looking at? It's terrible. It's like, it's it's like, um, I'm trying to aim for the head, like, genuinely. Like, apparently that's not aiming at the head. That is. It's not playable. You need to have these settings on Epic. Because it's, it's part of the gameplay. You need to be able to line up the head. Without that, you cannot play. So, do it. Fix it. Now, okay? Quickly, what we'll do is we'll move through the settings. Gameplay, I would actually recommend that you disable blood. I forgot to do that. Um, blood is just an extra visual effect that is a bit of a distraction in game. Not that useful. Uh, keyboard and mouse uh, makes you find a sensitivity that feels good for you. I'm not going to go into sensitivities and everything in regards to that. Uh, turn all these things off, toggles and mouse smoothing and auto sprint, just all stuff you definitely don't want on. Keybinds, I'm not going to cover today because that's kind of personal preference. I use the default bindings because I have no issues with them. If you find yourself stretching for keys and stuff, just find a different key that works for you. There isn't too many controls in this game. There's not too many things you can do. You move around, you shoot, you put portals down, you throw grenades, you close portals, but like it's a f only a few things. So move things onto mouse buttons, move things onto other keys that make sense for you. Just just make it work for you. Don't just go and follow everyone else's keybinds. Um audio, uh nothing really in particular in here that I think is super important. If you find music distracting, turn the music off. I actually quite like the music in this game. I think it's quite fun. Um, but nothing specific in here that's going to specifically aid you out. But lastly, UI. There's a couple of things in here which I would recommend you do. Number one, show your FPS. I've actually got this on as well as my Steam FPS counter. It's, it's good to know that you're not having some sort of frame rate issues in game. Because if you start seeing frame rate issues, you know you need to fix something on your PC. So show the FPS. It's useful. Damage numbers and low ammo warning, make sure those are on. Subtitles, I don't find very useful. Uh, show sprint crosshair, I like to keep my crosshair on. I don't like uh, this scenario where when you sprint, um, I thought it would get rid of the crosshair. Oh, maybe that's not what it does. That's what I thought it would do. Um, but I would keep that on because that's what I thought it would. I thought it would get rid of the crosshair when I got rid of it. So apologize for that. Um, the crosshairs I use, just out of interest, this is sort of personal preference, but I in general stick to, and uh, I need to change this one to match up. This is what I meant to do. I use two crosshairs depending on the gun. If I'm using uh, a kind of a precision gun, so that is the battle rifle, the carbine, the pistol, the rail gun, the rocket launcher, the sniper. Uh, I mean, the BFB doesn't really matter, or the fist because they're both melee. But everything else, I like to use a standard white crosshair. Um, as opposed to all the different weird crosshairs that the guns have. This is a crosshair that I'm used to from playing games like Valorant, um, and I feel like I can line up headshots with the little gap in the middle. Bit personal preference, but I'd recommend you don't go for the weird big crosshairs that the game picks for you because they don't allow you to see what you're looking at that all that well. And then for things like the AR and the plasma rifle, the shotgun and the SMG, which are all guns which have a bit of kind of bloom to them. Uh, so for example, if I pick up the uh, the assault rifle uh, and start shooting, the bullets kind of come out in all kinds of different directions. Uh, I like this crosshair. It's, it's fairly low profile um, and I like it just more than the one that it comes with. And I feel like keeping the crosshairs pretty consistent across your guns, so I've only got two that I'm ever actually using, 
just means there's less change happening. You're not having to get used to different crosshairs, too much for different scenarios. I think that's just a little helpful thing that will help you out. Uh, and then finally, make sure your enemy crosshair color is something that's still quite vibrant. You don't want your crosshair darkening too much when you aim at something. If I put this on like a really dark uh, color, if I can find something really dark, yeah, like, I mean, black, it's, it's actually quite hard to see your crosshair when you start aiming at people, which isn't too helpful. So keep it to something light. I've just realized I'm not going to remember what I had it at. I had it at something that was like uh, uh, this, like some sort of green or something. Uh, yeah, some sort of green or an orange, something a bit vibrant that, that, that looks good. I'd highly recommend that. And that's all the settings. Uh, mouth's a bit dry after going through all that, but I just want to say that I am absolutely loving Splitgate. Um, it's kind of like a, a good game to be playing. I say until Halo comes out, but who knows what the next Halo is really going to be like. We've seen some, some gameplay of it, and honestly, Splitgate's just... It's got really good developers, a lot of backing, a lot of support at the moment, and honestly, um, a lot of excitement um, from both myself as well as everyone else in the Splitgate community. So if you'd like to see more Splitgate, as I said at the beginning of the video, leave a like down below, comment down below what your favorite thing about Splitgate is, and uh, that's it, guys. I hope to see you here for my next video.